Welcome to Catalyzing Change Week. This year's Catalyzing Change Week is about solutions from the front lines by social innovators. In 2022, Catalyst 2030 concentrated its efforts on bringing proximate leaders and frontline solutions to the forefront. Collaborations led by members from the Global South produced groundbreaking reports on climate and transforming education 
with an emphasis on offering local solutions. We continued our mission to create an enabling environment for social entrepreneurs to flourish by initiating a letter to donors signed by more than 1,200 social entrepreneurs and innovators. The Catalyst 2030 award ceremony was spectacular and the awards themselves welcomed by the private sector, governments, buyer multilaterals and donors. Catalyst 2030 as a movement is disruptive. One of the best things I think that's come out of Catalyst 2030 so far um, is incredible collaboration across the ecosystem that just didn't exist before Catalyst came into being. The thing I love most about Catalyst is that it's an open movement for social entrepreneurs around the world. I'd encourage anyone who's uh, looking to be more connected with their local communities around social development goals to come along to Catalyze and Change Week. Welcome to Catalyzing Change Week. Hello all, welcome to Catalyzing Change Week and welcome to the writing workshop, Turning Stories into Action. A few housekeeping rules, please keep your videos on if possible, show your name and company. How you can do this is by clicking on participants, click on your name and then rename. Kindly unmute yourself when you want to speak. Other than that, please stay on mute so we have a successful session. And also for any technical questions, visit zoom.us support or raise your hand and we'll be here to help you. Thank you and enjoy the session. Yulia, kindly take over. Thank you so much, Winifred. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, <laughs> good evening, everyone. It's such extraordinary morning for us. We are based in Miami. It's 8.35 uh, already a.m. So please feel free uh, to introduce yourself in this chat. We want to see where you are joining us from, um, what's your time zone. Um, so yeah, we are very excited to uh, host this workshop in partnership with Catalyst 2030, and uh, we are very, very grateful to this awesome organization that uh, bring together amazing um, change makers across the world, and actually allow allows all of us to um, to connect across the borders in this very divided world, uh, connect through all the bridge. Um, all the divides and build bridges and uh, to share our experience, local experience, how we are uh, driving uh, this positive sustainable change in our communities. And um, let me share my screen. We prepare the presentation. Okay. Like from start. So then, title of our workshop today, Turning Stories into Action. And as I mentioned, we are very grateful to Catalyst 2030 for this opportunity to share our own hands-on experience, um, what we are doing in community journalism here in Miami. And my name is Yulia Strokova. I'm a founder and publisher of Impact Edition. Uh, today I can say magazine. Um, and uh, I'm happy to have with me today Samantha Shalit. She is our editor in chief. Actually, Samantha will cover the second part of the most important part of this uh, workshop, and we'll share all these uh, hands-on real techniques uh, that you can apply in your own uh, creative uh, work in your writing. And um, Impact Edition was born um, in 2019. Um, uh, we at that time we existed just online uh, as a digital media platform uh, devoted to sustainable development and collective efforts. Um, our mission is very simple. We are trying to elevate the voices of uh, local change makers, uh, community champions, uh, people who make uh, Miami uh, more resilient, more just, more sustainable, more happy and healthy. And um, three, year ago, three years ago, yeah, we found this communication gap in our news landscape that there are so many emerging social entrepreneurs, emerging small nonprofits, grassroots organization, uh, which don't have enough representation and visibility in our media spaces. And that was our goal and our mission and our passion, uh, you know, to fill in this uh, communication gap and to create enough visibility 
uh, through our writing efforts and through our creative efforts. And this is how, yeah, the idea of Impact Edition was born. Um, today, I'm happy uh, to say that uh, we exist not only digitally, and you, actually you can check our website, impactedition.org. Uh, we already released several issues of Impact Edition magazine Oops, because of my um uh, yeah virtual background you can see um what i have in my hands but i shared uh in our chat the latest issue of um, the digital of course version of uh, impact edition magazine and uh, i encourage you to explore uh this latest issue and we will share later our premiere edition who is miami um so and yeah uh, just a bit more uh, background information last year we received official ISSN number from the library of congress and now we are committed to release uh this print magazine twice per year and uh, most of the stories like evergreen stories we want to bring people inspiration hope um how everyone how every individual can drive this positive sustainable change in our communities and uh, this time we reached 2000 copies of our print circulation and as you see we are also emerging non-profit media uh, and uh, hopefully yeah with this significant uh, community support uh we can reach our print run and for us it's extremely important to keep all the stories accessible and um, that's why yeah we don't have any paywalls and uh, on our website and beyond on that yeah we uh distribute this uh copies um complementary within our community partner network and uh want to bring all the stories stories of our local change makers where people are and uh, we use not only this is yeah previews from our uh, uh premiere edition and the latest one and to convey all the stories uh, to our broader audiences. We use not only like uh, uh, storytelling tools, uh, I mean, uh, through community journalism, we also run uh, outdoor advertising campaigns. And this is uh, what we deployed last year. Uh, maybe you might find this might you might find this uh, inspiring and exciting. And we feel these all these campaigns can be replicated in any locations across the world and what we did we use bus stop shelters as, uh, as displays for all these beautiful uh photos and actually we collaborate and we are very yeah grateful for this collaboration uh with uh good miami project it's uh, another one uh non-profit organization based here in Miami and uh Greg Clark he's a social justice environmental photographer he provides pro bono photo shooting to um emerging uh non-profits and we started collaborating uh with him and with his uh project good Miami and uh we shared all this um Waters, we played them in the bus stop shelters, added QR code that linked to our article that we already released through impactedition.org. And everyone in Miami could pass by and scan QR code and to dive uh, into all these stories that we released through impactedition.org. Um, and to learn more actually about all these beautiful people. And we can say, this campaign, this transit exhibition, we call it storytelling exhibition about ordinary people doing extraordinary things with the huge success. And uh, we are going through, uh, again, through grant application to find financial resources to deploy the same exhibition, uh, but in the new areas uh, in Miami. And um, again, we feel uh, this like a case study that could be uh, replicated uh, anywhere. And um, yeah, when folks ask us uh, how you define your characters your change makers because of course we are small but very mighty team of uh creators journalists 
and we are very picky about the organizations uh, and people, individuals we feature. Uh, you can see if you check our magazine and if you can check our website, we cover topics around climate change, social justice, uh, art for impact, uh, business for good. For us, it's very important to create this uh, intellectual media space for everyone, uh, uh, for people with very diverse backgrounds, and we intentionally uh, to collide them through every single piece and want to show that, guys, uh, we are all here. It doesn't matter you run nonprofits or you run business or you're a scientist at the university. We want to bring everyone into this uh, uh, one uh, communications uh, media space and to show that all individuals efforts um, individual efforts yeah matter um, and uh, for us from the inception was very important to uh, to track our own performance using the sustainable development goals and uh, that was that time like back 2019 that was extremely innovative you know for journalists to use sdgs as a metrics to track their own performance but we are very proud uh, to do that because at the same time we can show our own social impact how writing skills matter and storytelling uh, skills matter right to uh, to drive this progress and to shape this sustainable future in our communities and um, this is this is like the guide for us and for everyone how to start a good story uh, and uh, I would say this is like a pre-steps someone to dive deeper yeah how we actually working on the writing and editorial process but if someone wants to um, wants to try uh, their hands in writing and uh, are looking for generating more meaningful and inspiring content, yeah, in uh, uh, in their locations, communities. So of course, the first step. Uh, uh, you should connect uh, all your stories to the certain SDGs. You need to understand, yeah, how uh, how does your local story connect to the global sustainable uh, agenda? And it doesn't mean you need to cover all the 70 sustainable goals. So we uh, discovered here in Miami amazing organizations, right, who uh, target the specific uh, the specific goal, and we want to help them. Uh, to strengthen their local advocacy to that global level and to show emerging, uh, again, nonprofits and emerging social entrepreneurs who sometimes, yeah, are not really well aware of all these SDGs and sometimes don't have clear understanding why they need to promote SDG, why they need to use all of them in their communication spaces. We want to show that this is, guys, how you can scale your local impact and to show uh the rest of the world that uh all individual efforts uh matter and uh to show again how you contribute into this global agenda, because of course all this problem sounds a bit far away uh, from our daily reality. And but at the same time, every single day, all these beautiful people, change makers. Again, we call them ordinary people doing extraordinary things. They take all the steps to uh, to get us closer to achieving uh, all these sustainable development goals. So this is the first step. And of course, we are looking for. Um, original, inspiring, meaningful content uh, that, uh, not just content, solutions uh, to uh, our, the most pressing problems that we experience here. And I'm sure in everywhere you can find uh, role models who could inspire others to do something meaningful and make a difference in their communities. And it's it's very critical to, because there are millions uh, organizations who do something good, but it's important to see which organization or which individual uh, can create like a long lasting change and in our communities and how we can uh, follow this uh, role model and um, um, to convey this experience through this story. So um, this is, yeah, this is something about original experience that we are always looking for and how we do this, of course, through our own research. It's a, daily deep rock 
uh, we don't use any, you know, like um, AI tools uh, to get closer to our communities. We are pretty basic. We go to social media, we explore hashtags, we are trying to define uh, the voices underrepresented in mainstream media. And of course, yeah, we are trying to um, volunteer with different organizations. We uh, are deeply involved into community social impact accelerators and trying again to find um, underserved communities, underrepresented voices, because some people you could see this um, are really great with self-promotion and they have strong voice over social media. But what we see here at local level, sometimes all this passion entrepreneur, special um, uh, yeah, change makers, community champions uh, are so focused on their daily you know, activities. Sometimes even they don't have time to promote themselves really well. And this is how we feel it's on our shoulder, this mission to to help them to convey uh, all the messages and to highlight all uh, the beautiful and meaningful and inspiring things uh, they do and um, yeah so this is this is our strategic approach how we uh, define all these community voices how we work with our change makers uh, but again, this is this is uh, daily uh, research, networking, yeah. And but at the same time, it's yeah, it's challenging, but it's rewarding. We uh, we discovered so many beautiful uh, people in Miami, and I'm, for example, immigrant, and my um, living in Miami. Um, it's it's like my passion to to give different perspectives on this uh, magic city and to show yeah that we don't we have here not only the beautiful beaches nightlife and like some touristic shiny stuff but we have the community of people who take care of Miami. And since we live the next to the ocean, we experience sea uh, rising, right? So sea level rising. So <clears throat> we uh, live like with the nature in urban environment. Uh, we want to inspire people how uh, they can uh, take every day some actions, maybe baby steps, but if we multiple the steps by millions, we can, accelerate yeah a scale our impact social impact so this is our um, it's a brief introduction of uh yeah who we are and what we are doing and uh, more give you sense like uh, about our mission and i think i will stop here and uh, i will pass uh, to to my colleague my dear friend uh samantha shelley that i met uh, three years ago here in miami she was born and raised here and uh, she will uh, navigate you better how we are working uh, on every single piece uh, on this writing process so i will stop here and um we encourage uh, all our guests today to share all your questions um, in the chat. And uh, in the end of this workshop, yeah, we will be happy to address all these questions. So, Samantha, to you. Thank you so much, Yulia. Um, when I when I met Yulia about three-ish years ago, we met on Instagram. Um, and then we got we met up talked about impact edition and we've been inseparable ever since um this is the impact edition is the kind of journalism that i dreamed about when i was in school that i didn't know existed and it very much brought me back to rediscover the place that i grew up in um and so it's been a it's a really beautiful experience and inspiring as a as a journalist too. So today we're going to focus on a more specific challenge that we often experience when trying to write a story is you know what you want to write about, you've done all the interviews, you've done all the research, how do you start the first paragraph? That first page when it's blank is very intimidating and we've we started to notice a, a pattern of a few different 
tactics that we would use in our stories that draw, that would draw the reader in. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna go through a few of those and show you what that looks like in from our our content. So the first tactic is to introduce a memorable narrator or a protagonist. Now there is a, a bit of a vocabulary lesson for for this for the way that we talk about our journalism. It's a slightly unorthodox, but we like to talk about the the people that we're the real people that we're interviewing as characters. We use vocabulary that's common in creative writing or in movies and TV because the when you get really emotionally drawn to somebody, to their mission, you you believe in that person, you connect with them and their character. So when we work with young with our young writers, we try to inspire in, in them to develop that character the the person exists and their character exists how do you how do you bring it out and how do you make them real the, what i love so much about feature stories um is it when you're when you do it right it feels like you are meeting someone uh in person just through reading about them so the, that personality and, and that character psychology is there from the very beginning. So as we we told a story about Nadege Green, who is a an incredible award winning journalist. Um, she worked with she's featured here in in her photo. Um, she worked with NPR. She's now with the Community Justice Project here in Miami, and the story is called "We All Have Stories to Tell." So Nadej is a born storyteller. She talks about the everyday things with the same wonder and passion that drives her social activism. Her language is stories rooted in truth and meaning of what it is to be human. Her voice has a soothing intonation of strength and you can hear the quiet intelligence that makes her reporting so impactful. She tells every story from a place of compassion and she knows Miami inside and out. Now the rest of the story, we did a, a bit of a, an introduction to her. And the rest of the story was her interview, word for word what she said. She's incredibly well-spoken and eloquent. And that was a, we liked doing it that way for her piece because it really elevated her voice. Our We didn't want our narration to really get in the way of what she could do by herself. And we wanted to just be a platform to elevate that, that voice of hers. Um, so that was the, the tactic that we used in this case. It depends on, it depends on who you're, you're featuring. We like to use this tactic when we have, we're interviewing someone who has more than, you know, a, a few really great sentences and then, you know, pack that with narration. You just, I, I mean, I sat in the interview and I could have listened to her for hours. It was that, she's that kind of person. So that, this tactic works really well, well when you were um, talking to, to someone of that kind of character. Now the, the next tactic that we use is starting with a, a crucial memory. You choose a, a scene, that shows a dilemma or a choice or something that is bound to have consequences for your character in the story. So the example uh, that, that we used, it's, the story was called Deal with, Deal with Trash. And a year ago, several students from the University of Miami finished drinking water and couldn't figure out what to do with the empty plastic bottles. The dorms recycling bins were full and looked exactly like the trash cans, no sorting, no recycling. The problem seemed obvious. We need to encourage recycling. What if instead of ending up in the messy bins, a landfill or ocean, the plastic bottle could go toward charity donations, thought Anwar Khan. And voila, the idea to develop cycle technology, a mobile application with instant rewards is born. So that was that was the defining moment that encouraged these young students to create and innovate on something that just wasn't there before. And they solved a, a problem with a long-term solution. So that that was the great the great place to start is how is 
what spurred the these students' actions. And you, we put the reader right into the situation that they were confronted with. And then when we went through and explained how the program worked and the impact, it all it told a, a chronological and linear story where you, you understood what these students really wanted to solve. So step, not step three, but a tactic three that you could use is starting a story with an ambiguous action. A little bit of mystery or confusion at the start of your piece can really reel readers in. Do you ever read a first couple of lines of, of a book or, or an article where you think, okay, I don't know what you're talking about, but I got to know what you're talking about. So there's a fine line because mystifying the readers so that they bail in frustration doesn't, you know, obviously isn't what we're going for. Um, but if the purpose or the reasons for your ambiguous act opening aren't clear at first, the action itself must sustain readers' interest until there's some more clarity. So an example of that where, where we use this, this kind of technique uh, is in a story called Long Distance Affair. So I'm going to, I'm going to read the, the intro by itself with no explanation. So you get the, you get the effect. Um, in Madrid, it's 1 a.m. Angel meets new guests from Miami in his apartment. In Singapore, it's, near, it's early morning, 6 a.m. Sabrina is staying at home and doing the same. Flights are not canceled, not delayed. Everything happens on time. The passengers are coming. The size of the room doesn't matter. Everyone is welcome. The strangers might be quiet and tired or talkative and ready to interact. This experience meets you as you are and where you are. Just take a ticket. It's long distance affair. So long distance affair was a, a creation of a, a, a theater company locally here in Miami that would traditionally do, um, they would take a space like a motel, like a, an old classic motel in Miami, and they would create a theater performance that spanned the entire motel in different rooms. So as a, as a it's interactive theater, as a, as a guest, you would go to the various different rooms and inter, even interact with the actors as they were doing their performance during the pandemic that organization, that um, theater company couldn't do that anymore. So they came up with this long distance affair performance and the entire thing was done on Zoom, but all of the actors uh, were in different locations around the world. So we decided to use this tactic of this little bit of mystery. You know, you, you have, how do you have people in all these different locations visiting people at strange times in, in the night, um, that, that was how. So our, our fourth tactic is leading with a purposeful prologue. It's the key is giving broad historical context that paves the way for the main story and or a, a scene or an event that precedes the main narrative. But the, the key is that the consequences ripple through the whole story. It's like giving the context for, for what, what you need to know why this matters so much. So this story is called You Included. Starting at 10 a.m. on Biscayne Bay, children's smiling eyes reveal the beginnings of meaningful connections. Kids sail in pairs. A child with a disability cruises through the water with a high school mentor. Harry Horgan, an ocean lover paralyzed by a car accident at age 22, co-founded Shake a Leg Miami to give people with disabilities an equal opportunity to enjoy the water, but their impact extends beyond leisure. Shake a Leg has been hosting adaptive water sports and vocational development programs for people with physical, developmental, and economic challenges together with their family and friends for nearly 32 years. So I love, I love this introduction um, because of how, not just how lyrical the the language is it really puts you puts you there uh in in the scene and you you realize how how impactful just from this one paragraph that these experience the experiences are for for the participants and for those who who run the organization so when we led into the rest of the story and gave 
more details on how the the literal impact of the organization, how it, it's been changing lives in in Miami. Um, this was a really nice way to lead into that story. So this is our final tactic that we like to use. Um, it's kind of one of my favorites. Now, I do want to take a moment before we get to the example of, of the story and ask if anyone, if anyone can determine what the photo on the right side of the screen is. It's a, it's a close up of something. What do you think it might be? You're welcome to come off mute and, and, and guess. I just put in the chat my BI. So. Oh, okay. Elephant skin. <laughs> Finger. Oh, it's a good guess. It's a good guess. <laughs> it's close. It's close. Rock. It's not mountains. Oh, yeah, it could be. Water. Hair. Mountains. Okay, okay. Well, these are great. <laughs> so the answer. Oh, that's a good guess. Good. Good. So the answer is something that is a it's a very rare but wonderful sight to see in Miami. It's healthy, it's a close-up of healthy manatee skin. The manatees in, in Florida, um, the most of them eventually get hit by a, by the propellers of a boat or a speedboat. Um, most of the time when you see a manatee, they are covered in scars. Um, but Greg, our, the photographer that Yulia mentioned that we collaborate with, he saw a manatee that didn't have a single scar and took this, this close-up picture. Um, and, and we just, we love it. So going back to the stories, it's these, the most memorable story openings some guys surprise us and make us pause for a moment. So this story is called Where the Wi-Fi Won't Go. Two months ago, Kathy Cleric, journalist and founder of Exchange for Change, E4C, was in the classroom at least three days a week, teaching writing courses, supervising other instructors' classes, and meeting with student facilitators. Then the pandemic forced educators around the world to transition to virtual classrooms and navigate new technology for their online classes. But Kathy and her team's work grounded to a screeching halt. They teach in prisons where the internet is as invisible as COVID-19. So th this story we, of course, wrote in the, in the midst of the pandemic. Um, and it was really impactful to realize how disconnected uh, one could become depending on their circumstances uh, during the pandemic. And Kathy and her her team had to get really creative in order to to continue their their classes. Um, so that was that was another that was a story we we also really enjoyed working on, though a bit heartbreaking. So those are our five tactics for getting through the first paragraph of your story. Um, does anyone have any questions or thoughts that they'd like to share with us? So I think I will stop sure here. And um, let me check the chart. So thank you so much, yeah, for I didn't mention for all your introductions, brief, yeah, in the chat. It's truly exciting to see the whole world, yeah, uh, connecting in this uh, through this workshop. Um, yeah, we need to save all these uh, emails. We would love to stay in touch, of course, yeah, with all of you. And if you are interested in our experience, what we are doing in community journalists. We would love, yeah, to provide maybe more knowledge, yeah, and uh, please also follow us over social media. We appreciate every like, every repost. Uh, we live in this digital world also, and uh, um, yeah, you can easily find us through 
at impact.edition uh, through Twitter, through Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. So, and uh, Deepak, yeah, I see your hand. So, uh, hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, yeah. Okay, firstly, uh, the narration itself was so fantastic. Uh, it was great. Thank you. Um, I'm just curious, um, you spoke about earlier, Yulia, you spoke about connecting your impact stories to the SDGs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you presented five stories as well here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious how um, each of these particular stories of impact that you have shared have created an impact towards the SDGs and how are you measuring it? So the question, uh, how, could you could you repeat the last part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the question is, how are you um, the the stories of impact that you are uh -huh. you know sharing in the community must be creating a lot of impacts, right? Including ripples, and so how do you measure? How do you how do you see that impact, and how do you measure that impact? You know, in relation to the sustainable development goals. So through through this um, connection yet yeah, to the certain SDG, we want to show our local emerging nonprofits, right? People who take individual actions every single day, sometimes invisibly, to show them that uh, all these actives contributing to solving all these global problems. And uh, we all know that all these small nonprofits are going through grant application, they're pitching their donors. And if they want to demonstrate like a big impact, right, that they create uh, within their communities, we feel SDGs is a perfect, yeah, as uh, um, a perfect roadmap that uh, they can use uh, to demonstrate uh, maybe in their like a marketing communications efforts, right? So, but this is extremely important to show that the effort that they take at the local level contribute into that global uh, agenda and help to solve all this uh, pressing uh, problem that we experience everywhere yeah we experience climate change everywhere social justice everywhere so and uh, injustice I would say. and um, yeah and we feel sdgs this is uh, this is again good a rope map and call to action for everyone to show that uh, we are all in the same boat together and all our collective efforts matter. And this is actually another thing, you know, uh, when we are talking um, about collaboration and collective efforts, this is something what we are trying to encourage um, and uh, promote through every hour single piece uh, and to show that, guys, we need to listen to the each other or we need to collaborate better. Academics should talk uh, with uh, businesses. Businesses should know about nonprofits. Nonprofits should know about social entrepreneurs and tech community. And this is the way how to, again, even through the SDG to connect all this pieces, all these uh, elements of our like local ecosystem, right? And to show that all this, again, activities uh, contribute into solving all this problem. It doesn't mean that only one social entrepreneur or a business uh, company can solve, you know, or tech company, we, we know we have like a very growing here, climate tech community, blue tech community, but all these people should communicate better with scientists and uh, dive deeper in their research. They also should know about all these local nonprofits who also contributing to solving all these problems and SDGs. Yeah, I would repeat here again. Uh, it's a, it's also, it's a connecting tool, you know, uh, for all this small element that uh, play huge significant role to, uh, to, uh, to help us achieve all these sustainable development goals. Okay, um, follow up. Thank you for that. Yeah. For that. A follow up question is, uh, I think specifically, I'm also trying to, understand the the type of metrics that you're probably using as well to evaluate the impact that you're creating right? so an example of a metric that comes to mind is perhaps the number of nonprofits who are able to raise funds after you know you're publishing the story of theirs 
or the number of collaborations that an organization is having and then you know so on and i know that the extent of measurement can be across the board you know like really large um, but are there like two two sub questions and then i'll stop one is um, are there uh, a specific set of metrics that you're using uh, and two is um, if you are using a set of metrics then what are some of the priority metrics you know for you if you don't mind sharing uh yeah of course we since we uh, exist in this digital world we use uh, typical publishing metrics yeah to track our own performance in terms of views uh downloads impressions of a website this is this is like the basic stuff that i feel uh yeah all marketing uh, communication professionals know about uh publishing businesses yeah but in terms of um demonstrating our social impact and this is uh, what I feel we need to uh, promote uh, among journalists because, you know, there are so many uh, con controversial things that are happening yeah, around journalists, and uh, but we believe firmly yeah, in the power of community media to do good, to um, build bridges, to connect people, to drive positive, sustainable change and uh, SDGs and um, using this is like a basic simple tool maybe first step yeah uh, to demonstrate our own impact as a journalist as a creators um, so allows us again to um, to scale impact not just us of all these people that we feature um, I, yeah, I, I can't say that we uh, have any extensive, you know, tools to track our social impact. And this is the question, yeah, for also other business companies that like struggle, which metric do they need to use, right, to track their own performance. But I feel it would, if we would, if we could start just from this basic step, we already can uh, create enough value you know enough value uh, around <clears throat> our job because uh, again uh, i uh, i'm a professional journalist my colleagues are not a professional journalist but uh, like five seven years ago we had to safely migrate to marketing communications field you know and to get also this experience but we want to come back to our passion and to our journalistic roots and to show that through our writing efforts we also can generate impact and when we are talking about storytelling story Telling as a tool can be applicable uh, in many fields, not just in community journalism. But we are talking about specifically about community journalism uh, that we do, you know, and how we uh, can demonstrate again to our communities impact that we generate through just our writing efforts. And when we reach 2000 copies uh, for just complementary distribution, and when we launch, uh, deploy the storytelling exhibition in Miami and place uh, all these beautiful images, all the story in public spaces, not just keeping them digitally somewhere, you know, uh, we, um, I think, yeah, we uh, increase our community reach significantly. And uh, this is, again, another tool how we uh, measure our own impact. And um, you know, and in this social sector, sometimes uh, when you see just <laughs> one happy eyes of one person, you feel that uh, your efforts are truly rewarding. And uh, I don't, I can't say that, yeah, like we scale significantly social impact and reach like million audiences, no. But if we see that we can change uh, and uh, not just life, but to, help uh, social entrepreneurs just to share their voices or use activists to share or their voices because when they come to us they say Yuli Samantha thank you so much yeah for allowing us to share our voices and I think uh, this is another I don't know uh, in which uh, yeah segments we can 
fit that, uh, but um, this is another feedback that we receive, and this is another tool to, uh, again, to evaluate our own performance, because we feel just providing this uh, platform where uh, all this young artists, uh, again, uh, um, small non-profits, youth activists. We, now, for example, we're working on the article where we feature uh, students uh, like of 15, 16 year and old uh, local activists. And yeah, they have never had uh, media presence. Uh, and now they can, uh, they have these opportunities to share this beautiful powerful voices and it's amazing how this uh like younger generation uh have enough passion energy influence not just their peers but adults uh you know in a good way in a positive way in a sustainable way so Samantha I don't know I just want to I would like to sum up I think what you what Yulia said is um a lot of a lot of our impact is providing the the third party credibility that these organizations and activists um, didn't have otherwise. We had a the the woman who's on the cover of of the magazine for this issue. Um, she her her the battle she was fighting was also featured in the in the first issue of the magazine. There there was a drilling company trying to drill in Big Cypress in the Everglades and. She couldn't get the she couldn't get into the the oil company to talk to anybody. She was trying to negotiate and try to protect the the land that they're indigenous to. And after we covered her story, it got picked up by a couple of other journalists, and she finally got the ear of the the oil company. And there were there are a couple other instances, it, like for the students. A lot of what they said when we, we well, young people that we interviewed said, you know, we can't, they don't mention their age when they email their representatives or they they couldn't get in, you know, to share their voice with the people who have the power to create, to make the change that they're, that they're asking for, that they're advocating for, but giving them some official media space suddenly opens the door. And they get to they get closer to accomplishing their goal. So going back to the, the the story I just mentioned about Big Cypress, the SDGs that are connected to that story are um, climate. Uh, wait, let me check. It's climate action, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions. Those are three goals um, that have been positively impacted just because of of this story. Um, so I hope that I hope that all answers your your question, and I do want to yeah. wonderful. I want to get to Emma's question. Um, she had asked if beyond the the first paragraph uh, of the story, what other what other techniques do we use to craft the body of of the narratives? Um, of, as we rely on journalism tactics um, that make up the story. So we do a lot of interviews, a lot of research, uh, we cite our sources. So we, we craft, it depends on, part of it depends on who we're talking to. Um, do we, do we really like publish the interview as is, does it stand really strongly on its own or does it need, does it need narrative and, and other, and other voices to, to lift up the, you know, the initial, character's voice. Um, it depends on, on what we're talking about. Some of the stories we've done have been broader. Um, for instance, in the second issue, we have Stewards of the Land, which was a story on urban design in Miami. And we it was necessary to talk to um, urban designers, engineers, um, who else do we talk to? Other advocates and people in different positions. So we we had many voices that we put together to make a, a strong narrative for how, how we build a strong urban design in, in Miami and make it sustainable. Um, an issue like, a broad issue like that for this story required a lot of voices that we crafted some narrative around um, for if we're focusing on one person like Nadege Green, or um, there's another great article 
called History Five Acres Wide um, about Dr. Marvin Dunn, who you might have seen on MSNBC and CNN. He's at the forefront of um, fighting back against DeSantis's legislation in, in Florida. Um, some stories you want to highlight that one voice and you use historical context and you use their their own expertise to lift the story up. Um, and you can get creative with the way that you you format it, inserting photos and videos, depending on your medium. Um, we try to a lot of it is gut instinct and trial and error. You see what what works and what doesn't. We do a lot of editing. <laughs> A lot so of editing, I would, and I would add just the, um, you know, every interview start with the, with the questions, and we are very careful uh, the question that we ask, and we work with our social impact writers and educating them, like don't please don't ask the question if you can find the answers to all this question just uh, on Google, so every time through our questions, yeah, in those questions, we're trying to explore the problems and to find the specific lens, how we can convey the story. For example, when we uh, explore the problem of belonging and how we create a sense of belonging for underrepresented, um, underserved communities. Um, so we develop specific questions, right, to explore this problem at the deepest level. So we even have another one workshop, how to ask the right questions and how to prepare uh, for every single interview that we uh, host. Yeah, with all our future change makers. So, Again, this is not just about profiling the organizations. We using their voices, but we want to bring their opinions, their views, perspectives into this communications media space. Uh, how they feel around all this issue that we experience here, not just our politicians, you know, who people are used to speak up in public spaces. We want to see what ordinary people doing extraordinary things think on different you know problem that we uh, experience here and beyond um yeah i just i just shared in the uh, in the chat the latest article that samantha mentioned about uh betty Asiol that you can see on the cover of our latest issue she's an environmental advocate and uh Please, yeah, uh, take a look at this latest issue and check all our uh, online stories. Uh, we would be very grateful. And of course, please uh, sign up for our newsletters. Um, this is the good way to connect with all our audiences. Um, and uh, I don't know if you miss any questions. Um, Well, thank you so much for your positive feedback and all your comments that you shared in the chat. It's a, it's a, yeah, motivation for us to continue our work uh, in Miami. And you know, we feel that uh, Impact Edition can be replicated everywhere. So if you have any ideas, yeah, um, to build something similar, we would love, uh, yeah, to learn more about your initiatives and how we can support it. Um, so, Yulia, are you thinking of scaling to more cities? We would love, yeah. This is our like a long term vision for Impact Edition uh, to bring, uh, yeah, to the national level. And we feel, yeah, there are so many untold stories, um, yeah, in not just uh, in the states, uh, in uh, every single city in the United States, and going beyond, right? So Impact Edition, and we need, and we see, of course, a huge decline yeah, in community journalism. Uh, everywhere and uh, but community journalism again has such a beautiful and powerful um uh, power yeah to to allow us hear our local voices and uh, because people who are closer to all these uh, solutions they can provide all this uh inspiring experience and give hopes right uh to the rest of the world how uh, others can make a difference uh, in uh, their neighborhoods, communities again, lives. And uh, this is 
I feel we need to cultivate in media spaces, you know, all these uh, hopeful stories and to show that positive, sustainable change is possible. It's possible when we listen to each other, when we inspire each other, when we educate each other. So this is our local and global vision. And yeah, and we feel uh, everywhere we can find uh, inspiring um knowledge and uh, stories and uh yeah and educate people because of course um sustainability uh, requires a high level of education but we are kind of tired you know to see all these like mandatory instructions okay you want to save uh, like uh to tackle climate change you need to follow these steps so plastic pollution this is five steps people don't read uh all these instructions people read stories and this is what uh yeah at their hearts right so and that's why for example we're talking about plastic pollution we're trying to use storytelling not just instructions five steps <laughs> how to fight plastic pollution but we use storytelling as an approach to convey one story or several stories of people who found already all these solutions and how you can just follow all these role models so um, this is this is our way yeah to influence people in a good way um and again, this is not just about journalists, and that's why we are so happy to meet to meet here Greg Clark, our collaborator from Good Miami Project, um, because Greg yeah had the same mission to use his photography skills for good, giving back to the community, and this is what actually we had also um, uh, we hosted another one a storytelling exhibition at Lynn University and uh, later this year we will bring the same exhibition to uh, Florida International University and we want like kind of educate and inspire younger generation younger creators who are really great in this content <laughs> production of all uh, social media TikTok Instagram but guys if you if you want to use your skills for good just yeah there are so many uh, small emerging nonprofits, and just help them because because of lack of budgeting they all these people can't afford to have all this uh uh you know department of marketing uh, and communications media relations manager and etc uh, so we feel all these young creators yeah with this production content production are very creative and inspiring can do something meaningful for others and but again, we feel we need to convey all these messages and educate a uh, younger generation how they all can use their creative skills for good. And this is uh, another our mission. And through this collaboration, as I mentioned, with Good Miami Project. So yeah, if you have great photographers, yeah, instead of just uh, taking random photos, you know, I feel yeah, we can help nonprofits just to get all this visual content that sometimes even work better, you know, when <laughs> on creating formats. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't know about timing. I feel, yeah, it's almost one hour. So um, thank you so much. I think we will stop here. Uh, yeah. And uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us today, for your participation and involvement, uh, all comments. Yeah, it's truly inspiring again. And we would love to stay in touch with all of you. Um, and feel free yeah, to reach out to us. You can find actually all, all contact information through our website. Yeah, it's highimpactedition.org, but you can use my name, Yulia or Samantha as the first part. We also have on our website the section Share Your Story, and we provide editorial support. So if you have, yes, we are based in Miami, but if you feel your community story can inspire folks in Miami, you know, and this is something how we can exchange our uh, best practices. So please feel free to reach out to us. We want, yeah, we want to deliver and convey more stories of uh, community champions. Um, yeah, and please follow us <laughs> over social media. And again, thank you so much to Catalyst 2030, yeah, uh, for this awesome, awesome opportunity to connect with the whole world in such a meaningful and inspiring way. You are most welcome. I thank you for such a session. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much for thank setting you. up. All right. Thank you.